All right, everyone. Let me turn on the uh, screencast keys there. Okay, so uh, as you may have known, if you've been following my channel, I have been working on this Godzilla fan film here for a little bit. And uh, I have been tapping into the power of linking versus appending objects to a scene. Okay, so if we go into my folder here and open, you can see here that I have a ton of different files I've already animated. And here's my Godzilla character. He's obviously in almost every single shot of that. So if I made a change to him or the armature, the rig that controls him, then I, uh, for example, here's a shot of him kind of falling over. Who is this strange creature he is fighting? I don't know. I wonder what who could, it could be. Anyway, a uh, little bit of spoiler there. Um, so anyway, he's falling over here. Let's say that, you know, as I'm animating it, I realize that, man, I really wish I had a certain control for his fingers or a certain control for his his, you know, for his face, for his, you know, to drive the shape keys or something like that. And as I've been animating it, I realized th there are certain things that I wish I had changed. Maybe even with the the uh, the object itself, maybe there's some some different sculpting or some errors that I found. So uh, let's go ahead and start a new file here. And as you may know, if you go and want to bring in objects from a different file, you would go to append, for example, and you would select, for example, your Godzilla version 14, go into the object uh, folder. So this is, you are drilling into the Blender file, which is a really unique thing that Blender can do. Also, if you want everything that was in that file, just go to scene instead of in the object folder and just append that scene. So you could append the, the different objects, everything that has to do with Godzilla. The armature, the body, the claws, the eyes, blah, 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 blah. And you could go ahead and append it. Alrighty. So now this guy has been appended. So as you can see here, when we select things, they have this orange color, which lets you know it is a normal uh, Blender editable object. So if I uh, right click on the Godzilla body in tab and go into the, oops. The screen keys turn off when you go to a new. Sorry about that. Hit tab and go in here. You can actually edit everything. And all the uh, options are available to you. You can use it like any other Blender uh, object that's in your scene. But the difference is this object is just here and, and it's, it's in this scene. It does not communicate with the previous scene where it came from. So if we want, for example, to change this object that we've animated in, in many different scenes, here's the way you do it. Let's uh, create a new scene. And instead of saying append, let's go to the link. Let's just show you, um, go to Godzilla version 14, go to object, select all these guys, link and append. All right, now you'll see, because we link things, now they have this cold blue color. So if we hit, if we go and hit tab, nothing is happening when we right click and select the object. And even if we go to the object mode and click here, you can see everything, editing mode, sculpt mode is grayed out. And you can see here the armature itself is also the cold blue and tabbing into that, going to pose mode, you can't do anything with it. Everything is completely blocked out. And you're saying, this is worthless. Well, not quite. So, for example, uh, meshes, mesh objects are uneditable because obviously there would be no point. Well, there would be a point if you had two-way communication between the current scene you're working in and the, origin, the scene where the object originated from. I wish there was something in file here menu where you could say like send the changes back to the original scene or something but there is not so the point of this is that you cannot edit it because you want to edit the original scene the original blender file where this uh, uh, creature came from and then the changes will propagate to every single uh, shot or, or scene where this object is in so if you want to change 
and give Godzilla spiky hair at the top or a mohawk, you would go back to the original Godzilla scene, uh, object, edit that, and then even if you had ob you know animated this guy in 200 or 300 different uh, Blender files, all those changes would propagate to those files. But uh, you still need to be able to use this in some sort of a meaningful way. For example, especially, you know, okay, it makes sense that you cannot edit the object in here if there's no two-way communication between the scenes, but you, you can't do anything with it right now. You cannot even animate with it. But what you can do is right-click to select the armature, go to Object, and go to Make Proxy. Control-Alt-P. And confirm that you want to make it a proxy. And then poof, it just disappears. Not really, it's actually still there. It's just that all the, the uh, um, modes have been reset. So if you click on the little um, icon here, it looks like a uh, stick man. Just reset X-ray, all right? And now you will see that the modes are here. You can even edit it if you want, and you can pose it. So now we can go ahead and start posing this guy. All right. But the nice thing is, is that even if we animate a whole bunch of stuff and then we change everything about this rig, it, the, this, the changes will propagate back to this file. No matter what kind of changes we have made to it, if we add different bones and stuff like that. Now, obviously, if you delete bones uh, from this thing, let's say you were to delete this thigh bone for whatever reason, or you delete this hand bone, um, when you come back to this file, those things won't be there. You won't be able to animate them. So, you know, they will be just immediately deleted out of there. So, um, but, you know, the power of this, again, is if you are, you know, doing, using the same character over and over and over in multiple scenes, you have the power to change it once. And the other nice thing is that you can go ahead and get started with your production and uh, start kind of learning on the fly. You could give this to somebody uh, if you're wor working in a team environment, and that way you could get, they could get started animating, and you could add the things as you know the animator realizes that they they need certain uh, tools added to the rig. Which believe me, it's going to happen. All right, it's just the reality of things. Uh, the other restriction is you at this point can only have one version of the object slash character uh, in the scene at one time, you know, you, you can append as many as you want. You can append it over and over and over again, but you can only link it one time in the scene. So you cannot uh, have an army of these Godzilla guys just by linking them in, into here. You can't go ahead and relink these guys. So if you go here and you relink, relink this stuff, you can see here that Everything is, it, it may in fact duplicate the geometry, but it's all sharing the same data. Let's go to object mode and, now if you want to overcome what's going on here, you can, you, you know, if you want to make everything particular to this file or local, so to speak, to this file, you can go to object and you can say, where is it? Make local selected object. Well, you're not going to see what's happening here, but once you make something local, for example, like let's say you, you want to make this character in here, um, you know, local to the scene, you don't care about having a two-way connection to the original scene. You can go to Object, Make Local, Select an Object, and Data. That means that all the modifiers, like the subdivision surfaces and the displacement, will also be uh, particular to the scene. You select that, and oops because he's attached to the armature. Now, you'll see that we can actually go into edit mode and we can change it within the scene. Of course, we have lost the connection to the original scene, so um, it's up to you, you know, what you want to do with it and stuff. So, uh, you know, you can go ahead, bring things in here. Uh, but, of course, the whole point of the proxy, of, of linking it is to have the power of being able to change the original scene and having those changes propagate back to all the other scenes that this object is a child of. Uh, but obviously there's going to be times when you don't 
really care about. It. Although, you know, really, if that's the case, you may as well just go ahead and say append because really, you know, what, what's the point of that? So, so anyway, that is uh, part one of doing this. I'm going to show you a few tricks on how to animate these proxy objects, uh, you know, in order to make a bigger, longer production. But it, it's quite a good thing if you have one particular character who's going to be used over and over and over again. You can go ahead and use the power of um, uh, linking and proxy objects to do your animation.